title of this one is Comparing Conservation Attitudes of Park Adjacent Communities, the case of Moli National Park in Ghana and that of Tarangiri National Park in Tanzania. <coughs> Uh, yes, um, local communities and biodiversity conservation. The national parks have their primary aim or objective to conserve biodiversity. But then if you look at biodiversity and then uh, local communities, especially in Africa, they are intrinsically linked. In fact, if one coughs, the other uh, catches cold. That means that you cannot deal with one without the other. Unfortunately, uh, since the beginning of modern conservation, Africa has adopted just what happened in the West, probably because we have always been sponsored by these people and they try to give to us what we should be doing regarding our conservation. It didn't work, and so I think around the 70s, Afri some African countries realized that it was a disaster using the draconian kind of uh, conservation approaches in Africa because a lot of our rural communities depend on natural resources. And so they decided to adopt uh, community-based natural resource management approaches starting, from in some, uh, starting in some southern African countries. Of course, we heard of the campfire projects in the uh, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, the LIFE project in Namibia, and in Tanzania here, I think it started with the CELO conservation project, just to ensure that uh, local communities are included in natural resources management. So after this realization, I think uh, in 1982, in the World Parks Summit in Bali, there was a huge declaration that countries should do their best to ensure that national parks particularly contribute to the development of local communities so that they are able to get the support of these local communities for the national parks. So from 1982, a lot of funding had come to especially African countries, including Tanzania, to make sure that they develop their community-based natural resource management projects. And this has been going on. But then, unfortunately, as we speak today, we still have challenges regarding effective biodiversity conservation in the national parks. It looks like there is an inverse relationship between biodiversity degradation and amount of funding to countries to protect biodiversity. As the funds increase, uh, biodiversity rather decreases. Uh, and this is not the resource we want. So this brings us to why we should continue to dig deeper to find reasons that will uh, motivate local communities to get on board projects that will promote biodiversity conservation, especially in protected areas in Africa. Talking about uh, attitudes, which are really the basis of somebody's support for, some, for something or not, there are key factors which will determine an individual's attitude towards something. But even before I go into the factors, I think it is really important to uh, just remind us what attitudes are. There are a lot of definitions around, but then I like uh, what one gentleman, Albarisin, says about attitudes. He says that it is a psychological tendency of an individual to evaluate an entity with a degree of favor or disfavor. And so if you evaluate it with a degree of favor, you are most likely to embrace it. If you evaluate it with a degree of disfavor, uh, you might resent doing something with that. So we are after positive attitudes from local communities towards conservation in Africa. How do we get that? These attitudes are actually affected by local community needs and uh, conservation objectives, as well as resource governance approach. But at among this portrait, I should say that it is resource governance that plays a major role, because that is where the difference comes. It is what we decide to do as 
national government in terms of policy or as uh, protected area management authorities that affect the local communities, which will determine how they will react, either to accept what is going on or to reject it. And so, as you say that the resource governance approach plays a major factor in the three factors. But of course, these three factors interact with each other. It depends on how we arrange them, how we make them uh, affect each other. That will contribute to either positive or negative attitude of local communities. So coming down to the local level, in Ghana, there is so much, uh, I mean, there is uh, so little research into protected areas in general, uh, not to talk of the attitudes of local communities. But the little that is available is pointing to uh, negative attitudes of local communities towards protected areas. But in Tanzania, I looked at research and uh, there's a lot more positive attitudes of local communities towards protected areas. But then the challenge is also there here. The questions, are, the questions keep coming as to whether the support local communities are getting actually result in their positive attitude and in their support for conservation of uh, natural resources. So uh, trying to contribute to this, I decided to look at, to assess the attitudes towards conservation of people in local communities near the Moli National Park in Ghana and the Tarangiri National Park in Tanzania. I'm just a, a student, so I cannot do so much, so I decided to just look at two parks in the two countries. And also to determine the effects of uh, demographic factors on adjacent communities uh, towards the two national parks and to compare the attitudes of residents in the communities near the Mole and uh, Tarangiri National Parks. Uh, with methodology, I use a combination of quantitative and qualitative. And uh, with the quantitative, basically, I did a household survey. But one important thing I would like to talk about that is the scale I use. In, uh, I basically use Likert scale which had seven points. So with the seven points, uh, strongly disagreed uh, was given one, and strongly agreed given seven. But if you look at the scale in the other way, you will find that I try to portray this side as the negative aspect of the scale. From one to three represented negative. So if one chose one, that was a negative uh, connotation regarding that particular statement. For example, if I make a statement like, uh, I'm happy I have this green environment around my village, what is your agreement on that? So if one says uh, six, the person quite agree. If he chose maybe two, uh, quite disagree. And that will represent a negative attitude towards green environment. So that is how the scale works. I, I think it is important to explain because as I go on in my results, we may need to remember this to be able to understand how uh, people uh, responded. Yes, these are the basic statistics of the research population. 56% of the respondents in Ghana were found to be uh, non-literate and uh, this compared to 24%, I'm rather here, 55% of the Ghanaian respondents were non-literate and 24 were literate in, Tanz uh, non -literate in Tanzania. Majority of the respondents in both countries, that is in Ghana, 56, Tanzania, 45, were within the age groups of 20 to 24. And uh, over half of the respondents in Ghana were into crop production and 59% of respondents in Tanzania were found to be agro-pastoralists. All right, so uh, today, basically, I'm trying to look at the attitudes of the communities towards the individual national parks. Uh, I think on one is that I, I try comparing the two countries, but today it's pretty much about how individual communities behave towards their particular national park. 
So let me refer us back to my scale. I was talking about one to seven, and one being the least, seven being the highest. As they are just around the neutral point, neither positive nor negative. But we can see a good portion of the box is actually below four, and that represents a negative attitude towards conservation. Okay, but then we still have a good portion of it be in the positive aspect. This is another community just hovering around the same point and uh, we have the community with the highest positive attitude was Bognori and this community I observed that uh, they are enjoying a lot of benefits from the park because they are supported by one conservation organization that is into helping to develop community natural resources so that local communities are able to leverage or need to make money for themselves. They also give small loans to women groups in their community. So I think that accounted for the high positive attitude. You see here uh, a lot more arrests of poachers in that community. So they are kind of uh, not so strong. And we can see that uh, a good portion of the box is actually below four, which represents a negative. When we come to uh, communities around Taragi National Park, you will find that the neutral point or the zero point is here. And then all the box blocks are about four, which means all the communities are positive. Okay. But uh, in terms of uh, their contribution, Kimotoro came up with the highest Median for uh, attitudes towards the Tarangiri National Park. And there is something interesting about Kimotorok. That was where I had a lot of complaints about border issues with the National Park. They claimed that the park has been kind of moving into the village land and it's, it's been an outstanding issue for a long time. So it was quite surprising after I ran my data that Kimotorok happened to be the, the highest, I mean, having the highest positive attitude towards the park. But what I can say is that if you go to my questions, a lot of the questions were asked based on the landscape of the area, vegetation, wildlife, and others, because these are the natural features of the park. The relationship between the park and community wasn't so much featured. I didn't ask so many questions about that because I was not into uh, those areas. And so that might have accounted. And so if you see that Kiwatoro has a high atti I mean, attitude, positive attitude towards the park, well, it, it might not mean that they don't have problems. What it means is that they like the landscape of the area. Yeah, so uh, regarding age of people in the two, who live near the two national parks, there was no significant effect of age on people's attitude towards the Molin National Park in Ghana. But for Terangiri, it was something that contributed. And we can see that the age group uh, less than 20 and 60 actually have the uh, lowest uh, attitudes. But then they are all positive in a way. But the trend that I see here is that as the young start growing, their attitudes increases and kind of falls down as uh, they become old. All right. Um, relationship between occupation and conservation attitudes towards the the two national parks. Again, there was no effect on the group in Ghana but there was a positive effect, uh, I mean, a significant effect on the relationship between the kind of work people do and their attitudes towards the national park. And uh, as we can see here, uh, petty traders had the highest kind of uh, positive attitude, probably because they have very little to do with the natural environment, so they, they don't have complaints about it. So uh, gender education and whether people were 
affected by wildlife destruction did not actually show any significant effect on their attitude towards conservation. And but the one that surprised me was the fact that people who are affected by wildlife destruction, whose animals are killed by wildlife, whose farms are destroyed by wildlife, were not actually uh, showing a negative attitude towards conservation of the two national parks. And 68% of respondents in committees around Mori National Park and 54 of their counterparts around Tarangiri National Park indicated they had been victims of wildlife destruction, yet that didn't affect their attitude towards the park. There is the need for the two national parks to step up efforts to minimize wildlife destruction because we see these are people who have challenges with wildlife but they still try to show a positive attitude towards wildlife. And so I think it is a, a low hanging fruit for the two national parks to use. If they try to help in curbing this problem, probably there will be sailing smoothly with the local communities. So I tried to find out why would you support conservation of either Moli or Tarangiri National Park. And I wanted to find out is it about what people think, uh, the moral aspect of it, or it is about economic gain. So on the side of people around Moli National Park in Ghana, I think it was about economic gain as we can see in the, in the table. And then those in Tarangiri, around Tarangiri National Park, it was much more about uh, their moral judgment of conservation of natural resources. In conclusion, I'm saying that individual communities around the Moli and Tarangiri National Parks must consider must be considered case by case basis because they have peculiar issues in all their communities. And so if we are designing a project to help uh, get the support of these communities, we need to go down and look at the various peculiar problems in the community so that uh, whatever is coming on board can uh, fall in line with people's what people uh, desire. And the livelihood activities of residents in communities around Tarangiri National Park need to be considered in any project because this was a, a key factor. There was a significant effect in that. Okay, and I um, suggested that regarding the wildlife destructions, there are simple technologies that the past can help local communities to adopt so that they are able to uh, control these wild animals. There is currently a project known as elephant chili uh, technique. They just use chili pepper powder, uh, soak a material uh, in, 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 in a dirty oil, and then they tie this, they make a, a line or a fence around the farm. And this, you know, the elephant has a very sensitive uh, sense organs, and they can easily sense this and go away when they go near farms like that. And this is being practiced around some communities in Tarangiri. So this can be replicated in other uh, national parks across uh, the country and also in Ghana. But uh, one challenge when I ask people who try to adopt this is that it's quite expensive for the local people. To fence a one hectare farm costs about 45 USD. So that is something uh, significant for a, a, a local farmer. And so if the parks help in just providing these funds, it will help the communities. All right, thank you very much for listening to me once again, and I welcome your comments. Thank you, thank you very much, Haruna. You are with those comments, can I? Yeah, madam. Uh, he said that uh, community needs, conservation objectives, and management approach all affect uh, the attitude that the people would have towards uh, uh, conservation of, uh, of, uh, of, of biodiversity. Okay. However, he also mentioned that he did not go into the relation. His questions did not uh, center or focus uh, on, at all on the relationship between the people and the park. And I, I, I felt like maybe that's a very critical element because how the park is managed will, will also determine how those people relate to the parks. For example, when you mentioned the call, uh, the, they are complaining that the park is in, uh, encroaching into their land. So this is uh, maybe the management strategies. How do they interact with management of the park 
the, the relationship between the communities and the park, I feel is a very important uh, contributor on, on the attitudes that they will have. Okay? So I wanted to know maybe, because if you ask about the landscape, the environment, uh, many people will appreciate a good environment, a uh, nice landscape, their aesthetic beauty and all that. But uh, what about the relationship? What is being done in the park? Does it uh, make them, are they content with the approaches that the park is doing? Is it, how is the relationship to these people and what is being done at the park or at the park management and so on and so forth? So maybe you can tell us maybe why he chose not to, to set on that. Uh, thank you, Professor, and thank you, uh, Aruna, for a very interesting presentation. I also like the, the slides. They are very elaborate and easy to follow. Uh, I must admit that this is uh, one of the few or the only work that I've encountered which uh, present uh, data that indicate uh, local communities speaking very positively about uh, conservation and especially with reference to Tarangiri National Park because over the course of the past three or four decades most of the literature has been biased towards uh, the antagonistic uh, relationship between conservation initiatives by the state and the other stakeholders vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the local communities and uh, this is what the data says and probably it's a very interesting uh, area to explore and probably uh, contest other studies that have, have noted otherwise. Uh, some of the, uh, of the scholars from the Institute of Resource Assessment, especially uh, Professor Madanga has done a lot of work in the area, but there are also other uh, scholars that might wish to look their work and probably contest their, their, their findings, like Fred Nelson, uh, Asani Sechadina, Catherine Homewood, Yes, friends, room. And there's a recent PhD that was uh, based in Kimotoroka, I think, in some of these other areas, uh, by a guy called uh, uh, Jeffrey Bluestein from the University of Copenhagen. They are all pointing to this antagonistic relationship between conservation initiatives and local libraries. But this is another extreme, and that is very interesting. It's going to make a compelling uh, read. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's also a nice presentation by Haruna. It's nice that you mentioned the discussion of Kimotoro. Mm -hmm. uh, in there, uh, we are doing some work in Dr. Noah there, and we really found that problem of the, the boundary mm -hmm. between the, the village and the, the, the park. Now, it's, 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 uh, as we were saying, it's a bit strange that they are, despite the conflict which has been there for quite a long time, yeah. they are still positive about uh, conservation. And like in other areas that I know, uh, where if uh, there's such a conflict, people tend to be quite negative about uh, conservation. Mm -hmm. Now, since here we have a, a good number of uh, master students, uh, there you can see an opening uh, mm -hmm. uh, for your study. Uh, that uh, how comes that uh, uh, there was such a conflict for a long time, and yet they are still very positive. Uh, it was conservation. It's an opening to think about for your master students. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Mansas. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for those comments. <clears throat> uh, uh, my colleague student, <laughs> and my good friend, yes, uh, the communities, like I said, do have their own needs, okay? And uh, in most cases, they are depressing needs because we are talking about survival. If you come out with any concept to achieve anything, I think a man will only be ready to listen to you after his survival needs are satisfied. We are talking about food and maybe shelter. So in some of the communities, in fact, in most of the communities, these survival issues are seriously affected by the projects we have around them. And so uh, what I did was that I did not want to go straight into looking at community park relationship per se, but then I broadened my horizon in terms of the questions I ask. I just tried to segregate 
the emotional issues because like uh, Dr. Addison just said, we have heard a lot about this uh, bickering and uh, I mean strife between communities and protected areas. So I didn't want to fall in that line. So I thought about my line of questioning. Why not segregate the landscape? Okay? Because when we're talking of protected areas, these are natural landscapes. Okay, but it is just the institution of protection. What we put in place as an institution to protect this area, that usually, and like I said in my slides, the resource governance approach is usually where the problems come from. Because these are the people who have lived with these communities years before. Whether they were, the argument has been that, well, especially in Taragiri, they were not here before the park was created. It was empty, nobody was staying there. But then people were using it. Okay, we have our offices and we have our rooms where we sleep. And so if you come here at uh, maybe 10 o'clock in the night and there's nobody, it doesn't mean this block is useless. It means that people have gone home and tomorrow they will come. So if those lands were there at the time of uh, institution of the parks and there were no people, it didn't mean that people were not using it. People were depending on it for their uh, livelihood, for their livelihood. So the issue is that I didn't want to revisit those issues. So my line of questioning was, I, I, I kind of uh, broken it into parts. I looked at the landscape issues, wildlife, vegetation. What is people's attitude towards it? Is it that they don't like conservation? Because that is, uh, as you seem to say, the misconception. The local communities are against or they are destroying the natural environment. So let's keep them away. That is not the issue. The issue is that that is their mental salary, where their mental salary is. The issue is that is where they take their children to when they are sick. You may take your child to Muhibili or Aga Khan, but for them, they go to the forest for a solution to their children's malaria. Yeah, and so you don't expect them to take things lightly, but we don't look at it that way when we travel from Dar es Salaam to the villages. We think that the way we live, they also take mental salary and so they can leave the forest alone. That's not the issue. So uh, uh, when I looked at it that way, majority of the, the responses towards the landscape and the wildlife were positive. And then finally, I aggregated everything. Of course, I included the uh, park community relationship. But then uh, the percentage was low because I was look, looking at different categories. So that didn't feature so much okay, in the composite score. So that has led to this. Even though you find that uh, the, 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 the attitude is positive, the positive is actually pointing to the people's love for their landscape and not their relationship with park communities. But then uh, if you were here on, on, on Wednesday, you would have uh, realized that uh, I, I talked about into detail about some of these community relations in some other objectives. This is just one objective for my study. In some other objectives, I delve deep into the park community relationship. Okay. Yeah, doctor, I think we are almost talking about uh, the same thing. Why high positive attitude, but then we know of the problems around I think uh, it's basically the same thing. That's why I explained that point longer. Uh, the way is about the way I structured my questions. I didn't want to be, I mean, uh, kind of biased or just follow what is already known. We already know that there are problems. And so my main concern was, are they, are they, is it a fact that the local community do not embrace conservation? Or it is the fact that they are survival has been threatened, okay? But the skills seem to be tilting towards the fact that, well, these people love the natural environment because I don't know, why would someone hate something that he has been depending on over the years? Because that is what they depend on. If you take it away, they have nothing. So they will definitely love it, okay. I think it boils down to the same thing. Dr. Masasu's question too is, is almost the same thing. Why high positive attitude even though we have the problems? And particularly with Kimotorok, it's quite uh, 
a serious issue, but I don't know why. I think recently, though I cannot read Kiswahili, I saw a, a headline news, a headline on one of the local news uh, papers, uh, and I saw the name Kimotorok, so I decided to give it to, show it to my colleagues who do read Kiswahili, and they told me that uh, people were reporting problems to the district commissioner about Terangiri National Park coming into their village land. So and I, they gave me the same issues when I went there. They talked about the same thing, the park encroaching on their lands. But the park says, no, we have, we have our beacons. We know where our boundaries end. And so what you are talking about has no substance. So these issues are there. And in fact, if you are talking about the relationship, they are bitter. Okay, if I were to show some of my findings regarding direct questions regarding park community relationship, they are totally negative against, against them. Okay, but for the natural environment, they are for it. Okay, thank you very much.